Hi friend, David here from Learn Stage Lighting, and today I want to do a new type of video that I want to call Head to Head Gear. And here's my vision for these videos, okay? Uh, with the launch of Learn Stage Lighting Gear a few months ago, I feel I'm really good about doing gear comparisons on this channel. So to give you a little background about Learn Stage Lighting and where we've come from and where we've not, uh, when I began this site, and for the first, you know, five, seven years, I don't know how long it was, of Learn Stage Lighting, I really shied away from selling gear. And, you know, it was the right decision at the time. Now, we've grown to a point where we've got a lot of viewership, we've got a lot of people here in the U.S., and I'm a large enough of a site to be able to become a dealer, or at least access dealer prices through a wholesaler, to get pretty much any of the brands that I generally recommend here on the site, okay? And so what I want to do is, you know, the reason why I never sold gear in the past, and that, that's a new thing for 2021 this year, is that I want to be impartial when I'm promoting a product to you, okay? When I'm suggesting a product for you to buy, I don't want to be partial to one brand or another, Okay, I just want to give you the facts. And being a dealer, and this is such a big problem in our industry, is that a lot of times people are a dealer and they primarily deal one brand or they're just a dealer for one brand. And that means if you ask them, okay, should I get this light or this light? They say, well, light B is in the brand that I sell and light A isn't. So I'm going to tell them that light B is the better choice. But what if it's not the better choice, right? And so today, I want to look at three fixtures that through Learn Stage Lighting Gear, uh, you can get your hands on. Now, if you're not familiar, Learn Stage Lighting Gear is a new service from Learn Stage Lighting. Uh, for Labs members, you get um, consultation on what would be the best piece of gear for you and our very best rates on gear. And if you're not a Labs member, we're still going to give you a great price. So check it out at learnstagelighting.com slash gear. Now, today I'm looking at the uh, kind of moving heads in that entry level realm for a small to mid sized stage. Okay. I don't typically cover and I don't typically talk about like the really small stuff that's like really dim and you have to be in like a pitch black room to even see it. I'm talking about, you know, moving lights that have a little bit of gusto to them. And so we're looking at spots and I'm looking at today the Chauvet DJ Intimidator Spot 360 uh, versus the Gamma LED Vision TX4 versus the ADJ Focus Spot 2X. And I want to go down and just work through all the features, talk about what's the same, what's different, how these lights are comparable, how are they not, and how to choose the right one for you. Because ultimately, when I look at these three products, they're very similar in a lot of ways. There are some differences. There are some things that on a spec sheet, we can't really tell, um, and I want to point that out here. So the first thing we're going to notice is the 360 spot and the focus spot um, are both 100 watt LEDs, and the TX4 is a 150 watt. Now, you might say instantly, oh, David, you know, if that's the case, why in the world is, you know, how can you say they're, they're similar fixtures if one's 150 watts and the other two are 100 watt, right? Because obviously, if we if we look at that wattage, we see, well, 150, uh, you know, compared to 100 is literally an extra third added on, okay? Or if you were going from 150, 100 watts is 66%. And that's where we got to talk about LEDs and moving lights. So whether or not this was an LED moving light or not, the amount of stuff that the light has to shine through, meaning color wheels, gobo wheels, etc., etc., on its way out the front of the light, the amount of stuff that there is and um, how far apart they are and, and things like that um, really do affect how much light actually comes out of the front of that lens, which is all we really care about because nobody cares how much light is at the source. You care about how much light is on your stage, right? Okay, and so... When we look at these three, they're pretty evenly matched. And what we want to look at first and foremost is overall brightness. 
So brightness, just as a quick, quick uh, overview, is measured in a couple ways. There are lumens, which you see a lot with like projectors, uh, video projectors, where that's the total light output um, calculated out, how much light comes out of this as a whole, okay? Um, regardless of zoom, etc. Then we have lux and foot candles, and these are uh, two sides of the same coin. It's like feet and meters. They're both measuring light at a given point in space um, and a given point in the beam. So that's where you know, you've got a big wide beam of light, say it's eight foot wide. You take a meter in the center of that beam, typically, and you measure the brightness there. Okay, that's a lux or foot candles measurement. And the difference between the two is, I forget the factor, it's 0.9 something, uh, 9.96 or something. So lux is about 10 times the foot candles number. Again, not exactly, um, but all three of these fixtures have measurements in lux, so we're all good. I, I learned lighting in foot candles, and so I'm always converting it in my head, but lux are great too. So when we look at these three units, just to start, um, we've got, and it's not a perfect observation, but we've got the Intimidator Spot 360. When I look at the beam of this one, I see a little bit of a hot spot in the center. That's not necessarily bad, but it does give us a slightly higher reading. And we can see here that it has, uh, at 17 degrees, 19,000 lux at 2 meters. Okay, 19,000. Then we've got the TX4. It's got 18,500 at 2 meters at 15 degrees, so it's a little narrower, not quite as bright, but it's really close, okay? Um, at that level of closeness, it's going to be more up to, like, the colors and the gobos as to how bright it looks, you know, and how deep they are versus anything else. Then we've got the Focus Spot 2X, and that guy, uh, I've got it over here is do, 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 at two meters, 15,000 lux at 16 degrees, okay? And so of the three, um, just based off of these benchmarks, I haven't actually seen them side by side, though if you'd like me to do side by side comparisons where I actually buy all three units and, and check it out, then uh, do buy stuff through us in Lion Stage Lighting Gear because, uh, you know, as we get that up and running and growing, um, I'll have the money to go and literally buy one of each of these units or arrange demos, get them shipped to me and ship them back and all that and take a closer look at the three. Okay. Um, but today we're not doing that. So out of the three, the Focus Spot 2X is probably the least bright looking um, at 16 degrees, but you can go ahead um, and zoom them. So let's talk about that. Um, one of the things that really makes you lose light inside of a unit is when it has a, pr a wide range of zoom. Uh, you typically just lose light in zoom optics with large ranges on spot type fixtures, okay? Um, and so both the focus spot and the intimidator spot have a manual zoom to them, okay? The TX4 does not. Truth be told, I am really not a big fan of these manual zooms because you, you typically get for yourself a little knob on the top or a little, a little something you can move. I can definitely see it on the, the focus spot. Um, it's very obvious right there. Now, you get this little knob you can turn and lo and behold, in setup, you know, some of these knobs get touched and others don't. And then you've got lights at different zoom angles and they're, you know, flown up in the air or cranked up on stands. And now you can't get to them easily and they're not different or they are different looking and you forgot to check. And I just don't like manual zooms, you know, also like this one's a 16 to 19 degree on the focus spot. And this one is a, I believe a 12 to 17 on the intimidator spot yeah 12 to 17 and i mean 12 to 17 at least that is a reasonable amount of difference like that's like just barely enough difference to take notice um 16 to 19 like to me i would rather not have that zoom like it's such a finite difference that that doesn't make sense to me okay um all of these lights have a couple things in common they all have color wheels they all have gobo wheels, they all have prisms, but they all have them in different amounts, okay? And that's interesting. Um, 
Truth be told, you know, I think they're all fairly equal in that feature set. So the ADJ and the Chauvet both have single gobo wheels um, and dual prisms, and I believe they both have single color wheels as well. Let's double check that. Yeah, yeah, it does. And so, and so when we look at, for example, the focus spot, we get six gobos on one wheel. They do rotate. On the Intimidator spot, we get, let's double check here, and I, I just, I go on Sweetwater because their pages honestly are, are the best. Um, we get eight slots, well, it's actually seven colors. Double check that on the focus spot. Eight slot colors, okay, so it's the same eight colors here, eight colors there, and the TX4 is seven colors plus white, so they're all eight colors. Um, they probably have the same colors in them if you look closely. Um, you've got 16 bit dimming, I believe on all three of them. And then the TX has a static gobo wheel. So these are gobos that don't rotate, but the prism does rotate. Um, there's eight of those plus white and six rotating gobos. Whereas the Chauvet, it has seven gobos in it. So seven gobos on the Chauvet, the focus spot has six gobos. It says seven Slot. They always mess with me when they say slots and then one of them is actually open and it's not a gobo. Uh, let me double check that. Gobo, gobo, gobo. It says seven slots. I'm pretty sure that's six gobos. I apologize for not getting that perfectly ahead of time. Yeah, six gobos, eight colors. Maybe I should have just gone ahead. Split colors as well. Um, the Chauvet one has, again, eight colors with continuous scroll. It doesn't say whether it does split colors where you're in between two colors on the wheel. Um, and then the gamma has da -da -da -dum, a single prism, but it has the two gobo wheels. So instead of just one six, six gobo wheel that rotates with six gobos, you get like a bonus color gobo wheel um, and you get a single prism. So between these three lights, I know I just like spewed out a bunch of specs and maybe that was boring, but if you're still here, um, there's a lot in common between these three fixtures. Um, build quality, I can tell you from touching these and just quality of like the LCD and the buttons, the TX4 is definitely the highest quality and it also has the quietest fan uh, from what I remember seeing all three and then touching them all at different times and, and seeing their, their output, okay? The TX definitely has a bit of a leg up on build quality. Um, the Intimidator and the Focus Spot, um, you know, the Focus Spot's a little bit less bright. The Intimidator is a little bit brighter. They all have power con in and throughs um, for the locking power connections. They all have DMX 3 pin in and throughs. They all have handles. They all mount with a single clamp. There's a lot in common between the three. So, how do you choose? Well, you know, ultimately, um, I would say, looking at these three, you know, they're all good choices. Um, I would probably be going for, um, if I were to choose today, I really like these TX4s. I've used them a good bit. I've been really happy with them. Clients of mine have been happy with them. Um, I just really like the fact that you get more gobos. Um, and the only real downside compared to the other two is that you only have one prism instead of two. And I just don't find on a smaller show, um, in a smaller rig, I just don't find that I need two prisms. I, I typically feel like one is enough and having that second set of gobos is gonna give me enough different looks for what I need. Um, of course, the one gobo wheel doesn't spin, but if you have the prism in, you can spin the prism while the gobo's in and you're good to go. So, what do you think? Um, lo and behold, they're all pretty similar, um, and pricing wise, um, the TX comes in around a hundred dollars less. Okay. So this one's 980, this one's 890 and this one's 970. So they're all within about a hundred dollars of each other, but the TX is definitely the least expensive at online price than any of them. So all three are good lights. Um, all three are ones that we can get you through Learn Stage Lighting Gear. And so if you are interested, if you watch this video and you said, okay, it's obvious to me, this is the light that I want to go with, 
let us know at Learn Stage Lighting Gear. Um, shoot me an email, gear at learnstagelighting.com, and check out learnstagelighting.com slash gear, where we help people to get great gear, and we can help you. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, hop over to learnstagelighting.com, and we'll see you guys in our next video. Thanks.